Hey, how's it going guys? I'm Paradoxic, and welcome back to Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. This time we're on Season 2, Episode 13, titled One of Us. Last time we had Sif and the Kree. We had Sif and the Kree back. Uh, Sif was an amnesiac, and the Kree was a Kree hunter of sorts. He received a signal that uh, Terragenesis had happened on Earth, and he came down here to stop the Terragenesis, because they were originally an, uh, an experiment... Um, conducted by the ancient Kree that went to various planets and tried to create super soldiers for themselves, and Earth was the only planet on which their experiments had worked, so Terragenesis was most was only successful on Earth, um, but then the better of the Kree decided that it was best to shut it down before they did something too rash irrational or too rash, um, so they shut it down, but then it started up again, and uh, the, the diviners everywhere were, um, there were six diviners, I think, and one of them was already activated and destroyed by, tri by Trip, God rest his soul. Um, another one is in Gordon's hands. Um, so the rest of them are, I don't know, they're, 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 they're I, don't, I don't know if Gordon has them all and we, we, we've only seen him with one, but the rest of them are somewhere else. Um, so we have yet to actually um, find out where those four are. Uh, but yeah, we had that. Uh, Lady Sif, yeah, she returned and she was an amnesiac. The Kree had like a, a truncheon that it could wipe out people's memories and stuff, so she had a bit of trouble there. But it, I think it was interesting seeing Sif kind of rediscover herself along the way before actually receiving her memory back through the truncheon again. Like her, like knowing that her, her finding out that she had armor and that she was a mighty warrior and that she had uh, that she had that she had a crush on Thor as well and. Stuff like that, so that was fun. Uh, but it was it was fun seeing her back in the in in the show as a whole because I think I think this was still when the, 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 this was after Dark World, so we, we we haven't really seen much of it. And I think this takes place around the same time as Guardians, maybe in like clo like coming up close to Age of Ultron. So not a lot of Thor solo wise in the MCU just yet. So not a lot of Sif either at that point. Um, so it was interesting to see her back in the show. She left afterwards and took the creative to Hala. Um, but yeah, but then the team discovered Sky uh, Daisy's secret. The team discovered Daisy's secret. I'm just going to give me a second. Yeah, but I accidentally wrote Daisy in my notes as well. Uh, but Sky even. Uh, yeah, the team discovered Daisy's secret because secret, the more that the Kree talked about how abnormal and monstrous these the, 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 the inhuman creations of the Kree were, the more triggered Daisy got. And, you know, she started setting off tremors and stuff like that, like before. And then she eventually revealed to Colson and Sky, to Colson and May, that it's her. That she 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 was the other one. She was she was the other person. Like um, the Kree pointed out that you know that, that sometimes the transformations aren't always visible or physical. Like for Raina, she physically transformed into something else. But for Daisy, her like for her, it's just powers. Like she she has different powers now. So yeah, that was that. And then the team discovered, and then the team were very very in, indifferent to it. Um. You know, like, um, Gemma felt that she'd been lied to by Fitz because he kept her in the dark and he even, you know, lied to her about the, about the DNA results. Um, and then, you know, Bobby and Mac and Hunter felt that they had a right to know about all of this and then they just, you know, um, they were being, I mean, in my opinion, they were being fairly dickish about it and then that drove Sky away and she just, you know, hopped onto the plane with a bag of stuff and I, I don't think she was intent on coming back. Um, but yeah, stuff went sideways, and that was that, and then at the very end, at the very end, Hunter finally decided to confront Mac about what his and Bobby's secret project was, right before Mac decided to put him to sleep in the most physical way possible, so he decided to just, you know, it didn't really knock, I, I feel like, I mean, yeah, someone did point out that, you know, Mac kind of, it, it was kind of a bit of hypocrisy on Mac's side, like, um, well, I could, Quite quite a couple of you know points of hypocrisy on his side, but you know at, at, right at the end of which you know he pointed out to Colson at the beginning of the episode that you know he he doesn't really like violence, and then at the end he just has no trouble putting him to sleep. But in fairness, I think him putting him to sleep that way was kind of like the lesser of two evils, as opposed to just going for like, straight for like a knockout punch that would you know that th that would leave a mark. That that would be more likely to leave a mark, kind of thing. But you know him actually. But then again, him choking him out would actually give Hunter more time to react and process what was going on. Even he, he couldn't get out of the chokehold, but it would give Hunter more time to actually register that he was being choked out by Max. So when he wakes back up again, you know, he can very well stand, stand, stand as a witness to his own, you know, rendering unconsciousness. So, yeah, um, but that's not going to go well. That is not going to go well. But 
hell of an episode this season is going in you know in ups and downs and just like a rocky road of roller coaster rides of emotions so yeah i can't even construct clear sentences anymore so yeah that is all i have from the last episode though so episode 13 one of us let's go steak and potatoes and peas dinner <laughs> does she have scissor hands carla faye gideon Got your name off the oh, she's on the index. Oh, she does have scissor hand or blade or something. Something sharp. Good. Oh yeah, she can finally eat that steak. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, jeez. Great. So straight off the bat, index recruitment. Great. I gotta say, director, no doubt, the best grilled cheese I've ever had. Secret ingredient. Don't ask. I will not disclose. That's a level seven type info. <laughs> hey, John, with all the monitoring. Assume you're putting me on the gifted index? We are. That's exactly what Cal said they would do. This out. Protocol is anyone on the index undergoes a full psyche eval and threat assessment. A threat assessment. Yeah, I get it, but come on, it's Daisy. It's Daisy. I I call. Andrew? It's not a thing. Andrew? You might say no. Who the hell's Andrew? Fitz and I shared science. It was sacred. Now that's changed. Yeah, well, Daisy wasn't ready to come forward with this. You should have given her I the time to, to come out with it herself. Now and our A betrayal of trust like that? It, well, it wasn't his secret to share either. It was Daisy's results, Daisy's knowledge of being different. Tell her I take it all back. All the don't die out there. Oh, jeez. Hope she rots in hell. Oh, Christ. Okay. Oh, is this Andrew? This is Andrew, Surprise. huh? <laughs> he recognizes me. If you'll excuse me. My sessions with her are in private. My evaluation won't be. She gets a copy. My duty is to her, not S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, patient confidentiality. I can kind of respect that. I can respect that. Nah, I talked to your mom. <laughs> she told me you were alive. She still hasn't forgiven me for divorcing you. Oh! <laughs> He's her ex-husband. <laughs> okay. Excuse me, sir. I do remember that she was married before. I do remember that. Uh, <laughs> Hi. Oh, ay, ay, ay. That's why she had the gloves, the metal gloves. That's why she had those. I did not know that you were married. Mm. Now you do. <laughs> Knowing the May we know now, it's hard to imagine her having settled down to begin with. <laughs> You'll like this one. Yeah, how do you know that? Because I was married to him. Yeah. Tell me about the wedding. <laughs> I'm thinking May could go either way, understated or full Bradzilla. She can be. Yeah, now she's into it. Now she's into it. Discuss my ex. Yeah. Did you guys have actual conversations? You know, like pillow talk, or was it just? <laughs> oh <laughs> my <laughs> god! How long are you going to deflect? <laughs> we didn't want a big wedding, and no, it wasn't Vegas. Oh, Melinda does love Vegas. That surprises me. That's surprising. Oh. That and the eloping, that's both surprising. As bachelor number two. He's the <laughs> Who's number two? Oh! Who's number two? That's not. Is that John Brute? I know. Oh, there's a kick. Ugh. Now, where's bachelor number two? Oh, that was John Brute. Okay, that was John Brute. David A. Angar. David Angar. Induces immediate catatonia with the slightest whisper. Huh. Here's his room. Catatonic whispers. Nope. Fight on. Uh. Oh, he's collecting members of the index. Thought we were going after Shield. You tell me about your mistake and I'll tell you about it. I don't care that much. <laughs> it's interesting, this chemistry between them. You hungry? I can fix you something. I'm not that hungry. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this doesn't know what he's walking into. <laughs> yeah, they're a bizarre pair. He listens for a living and she doesn't speak. <laughs> you know what they say about opposites. Oh, tremors, tremors again, tremors again. Oh, she's rocking the whole plane. Oh, she's just trying to nap. She's just trying to take a nap. Okay, just a nightmare. She just had a nightmare while sleeping. Forcing, so he got his hands on some Requesting extraction, steroids. Bobby. Something incredibly strong. I don't like food. You don't like food? Oh. You're an interesting fellow. Who doesn't like food? Just forget about Shield. Move on. Food is amazing. Haven't they robbed us of enough? Losing a child. It 
tears you apart. Or crushes you from the outside in. Yeah. To improve myself with chemistry. Chemistry? Results were. Oh, he gave himself a serum. But I keep working on a formula. Ah, that's how he has the strength then. That's how he has the insane strength. Oh, is fight on like a cheerleader thing, like a the chant or something? Oh, yeah, the outlaws fight on. Ah. Uh. Yeah. Oh, he was born in Wisconsin. Okay. How about you show me an ink blot, and I'll tell you about my first time. Humor. <laughs> yeah. That's your thing. Yeah, she's very funny. She's very funny. Way to avoid. Hey, the room is shaking. Right, which is why I need you to breathe. No, this isn't me. I'm not doing this. Wait, what? Who are? Oh, the oh, the plane's taking off. Okay, okay, that's different. Gentle, gentle. Does he have? Does he have a mouth or, or what? Oh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, he has that sonic boom voice type thing, doesn't he? Make it count. Yeah, if he is gonna talk or yell, then he's to aim at the right person. Oh, he's got quite the super group of misfits here, doesn't he? Oh, Jesus. His mouth opens wide. His mouth opens wide. Does he have any joints? Like a jaw joint? Oh, the birds are falling. Oh, my God. <laughs> Even the birds were affected. Oh, jeez, that is terrifying. What the hell are you and Bobby into, Mac? Yeah, at least explain to us now. Oh, gee, again, more teasing. Yeah, if there's one thing this show handles with perfection, it's teasing. Endless teasing. Tell me, what's your thing? I mean, I was hoping it was wings. Talk to me, not her. Wings. Mm. Oh, she is an angel. Maybe they'll listen to you. Oh, no, 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 no. Very bad idea. Don't, don't scream into that mic. Do not scream into that mic. Oh, Gordon's back. Gordon's coming back. And he's taking Cal. Gordon took cow. Oh, come on, that's it, that's it. Mm -hmm. Oh, ho, 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 ho. damn. Oh, Melinda's back in the game. Ugh. There we go. Oh, ho, ho, ho. nice. Yes. Yes, mate. Oh, ho, ho. Okay, okay, no, Daisy, 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 calm down. Daisy, calm down. Okay, she did it! She did it! Wait, what's happening? What the hell's happening? Why was she bruising? Daisy? What the hell happened to them? What happened to her? Her arms were bruising up. X-rays showed more than 75 hairline fractures from your clavicle to your fingers. Oh, that's a lot. But why? You weren't stopping your power, Sky. You were directing them inward. Oh, causing the tremors inside of her body. Oh, that's gotta hurt. Keep this between us. Don't bring anyone else in. You're gonna keep Scott and Daisy in the dark about this, really? She deserves to know what's going on, but I. I left Colson uh, and Sky. <laughs> her photos on my desk. Her? Huh? Like his new girlfriend? Oh, it's his new partner. Yeah, his new girlfriend or wife or whatever. So, where are they taking him and why are they... What are they doing? What the f What the hell is all this? For now, Bobby and I work for an organization. An outlier. That came out of the wreckage from what Fury left. Well, What's it called? Who the hell are you? Don't tell me Hydra! Do not tell me Hydra. Shield? The real shield. The real shield? Who the hell's the real shield? Oh, a new logo, a actual shield, eagle shield. The real shield? Wait, who runs this shield? What? I'm sounding a battle cry. I'm protecting us from shield. There is no us. You're not one of us. <laughs> You're a science experiment. <laughs> yeah, he gave himself the strength in the serum. Yeah. Uh, so what happens to me then? They're going to kill him? That's not for me to decide. Are they, is, are they gonna kill him? Who's gonna decide? Who decides what happens to him? Uh, 
Oh, they're gonna end it right there, aren't they? Gonna, oh, oh, geez, so much teasing in this episode. So damn much teasing. Oh, oh Jesus. Okay. Um. Oof, okay. So, um, geez, where do we start? I want to start with Andrew. <laughs> I want to start with Andrew. So, we meet May's ex-husband. We meet May's ex-husband. So. Yeah, that was a twisty reveal I didn't see come. I mean, less of a twist, more of a reveal. I mean, yeah, let, I mean, yeah, well, yeah twisty reveal, because uh, we knew May had an ex, I think she, she, she was Matt, well, we knew she had an ex. We knew she had an ex, whether that was a husband or a wife, we don't know. She, I think, I remember we, yeah, back when she did the interrogation back in season one for, like, um, for Eric's um, I- I- initiation thingy, we did know that she was married before, so we knew that much, but, and so we knew she had an ex-partner, but now we know that Andrew Garner was a former S.H.I.E.L.D. agent and also her ex-husband. That, 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 as soon as that line came out, I was like, oh, damn. Okay, I didn't see this one coming. Um, but he was a former S.H.I.E.L.D. agent, too. That, that's what struck me, because I never, I, ne- I never would have figured that... Um, I, can't, I can't remember if someone in the comments mentioned it before, that you know she actually was married during her time at S.H.I.E.L.D. I think I, think I, I do remember reading something like that, but... Um, but yeah, I think yeah, but I, I I never would have figured that. Though. I think yeah, I think I remember reading something like that. So I remember I, I remember that. But yeah, so she, so he he himself was a former Shield agent. I think um, I I don't know if he was the same as her. If he was an actual field operative or if he was working behind the scenes. But I think now he's like a psychologist or a, a, a therapist of some sort. Um, he's a, he works at like a university and stuff. So he's a professor of some sort. Um, but he used to be he used to be Shield agent. And he moved on. Um, and then they, they they divorced as a result of it. So, yeah, I think that that was an interesting addition. I think this brought out, like like Fitz pointed out, in certain scenes, this brought out a side of May that we've never really seen before. I think this brought out the side of May that there used to be. Because I think um, back in season one, we had the episode of um, Coulson descri- like, somewhat describing what happened in Bahrain um, and what, ha- what happened to May that changed her. And... and the May that she used to be, like the, that she used to be outgoing and funny and, you know, playing practical jokes and, you know, be, be, being somewhat like Daisy, being somewhat like Daisy. But then Bahrain happened and she went up against all those dudes and came out a changed woman. Um, so seeing Andrew back as well, see, seeing her ex-husband back and spending time with her and talking to her again, like that definitely brought out a new side of her, which I liked. I love this. Um, and I think it, it definitely shows like, an, like it, 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 it's a nice kind of different thing from... Ming Na Wen as well, like she, she's like you know spent so much time portraying May as this kind of you know protective but still defensive and you know cold shelled kind of like hard shelled kind of person. Um, but now with her ex husband back in the picture, even for, even even for a single episode, she knows how to like you know as an actress she knows how to use that to her advantage. Actually, show that you know she was a different person when she was with Andrew, and you know that person is still there. It just takes Andrew to actually bring it out again. So. You know that was a that was a really fun thing to see, like them actually talking, her laughing and smiling. Like May, I, May very well laughs. She smiles, she smiles, and that's a very pretty sight alone to see. But her laughing is something that you know very rarely happens. Like she 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 can see the humor in a situation. She can take jokes with Colson and stuff, but her laughing is something that we very rarely see. So it was nice to see that. Um, but yeah, so he said he left Shield for a reason originally, and. I mean, the inter- I mean, for most of the episode, I was thinking that, you know, them two being, like, them two not only working in the same line of work, but also being together like that in the same line of work, that would obviously come with its own set of complications, but, for, but then for them two as well, like, especially after what happened to her in Bahrain, um, he would see a changed person. He he probably wouldn't really see, I mean, he, he'd, be, he, he'd probably see May, but he, he, he'd still notice that she was different to the person he originally fell in love with, and so she, you know, the, 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 they weren't that compa- like, com- like, compatible anymore, and then he didn't enjoy working at S.H.I.E.L.D. as much anymore because of what it was and, you know, what it turned her into. Um, so then that would be, in it, like, a, a reason why he why he left. Um, and now, fast forward today, and he's got the picture turned inside to the desk. I think I think, I think that was something I, I, I clocked fairly early, early on. Like, you know, he... You know, he he he, he kind of keeps this love kind of closer to his life and more personal to him. He just just doesn't want just any old you know walker in just to see who it is. But now he's moved on. He has another partner. So, um, so yeah. But um, but he still has dinner and chats with May's mother. He still has dinners and chats for a dinner and chats with 
um, his with, with his ex wife's mother. And well, to be fair, she invited him over. So and even May said she still hasn't forgiven May for um for, for divorcing him. So he was clearly so so you know like the whole you know b- b- bringing your um, significant other to meet your pet parents to meet your family thing. Clearly, that was something that went well in this case. And May's mother actually came to like him and appreciated his work alongside her um, in Shield. So yeah, Daisy was put on the index, everything, you know, what exactly what um, Cal feared would happen, and I was, you know, in denial from the very beginning, I was like, you know, they, they never put on the index, they didn't put on the index, they never do it, I mean, looking back at now, I think the index is like, you know, Colson described it as just like a watch list for people that they consider, you know, I mean, they, they take these people, they do a full psych evaluation, as well as a threat analysis, so depending on how well that goes, they kind of, they then confirm their placement on said watch list, um, so the people they have on there are people who are criminals, who are, who are gifted, who are enhanced criminals. They 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 have power. They, they, they were criminals before they had their powers, and then their powers, once imbued upon them, just you know enhance their motives and their kind of criminal tendencies and whatnot. But you know, with Sky, with well, Daisy, it's um, it's somewhat the same thing. Like they, like they they know she's not a bad person. They know she's not a criminal. She doesn't have any kind of malicious intent with her powers. Um, but it's still, I think, for the, for like from their perspective, it's still worth putting her on the watch list just so that they know what they're up against. And like Colson said, you know, having like a, a contingency plan is never a bad thing to have. Like, you know, if if something does go wrong, if she ever, if something, if if, if you know, um, something ever does happen that she does that does force her to go rogue, they know how to you know take her down without having to kill her. They know how to actually you know block her powers, or they know how to. Um, dampen her powers somehow or knock her out just for the time being so they know that they, they wouldn't like, like never have to kill her this, this, this stuff would like would hopefully and also likely never drive her insane um but yeah it, it, it's it's of course I, I was surprised when they put her on the when they put her on the index but then yeah i mean i think i think i think the most malicious i think the 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 the, the, the kind of the, the most worrying thing about the index is that it, it's populated mostly by by criminals and you know even 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 that psych ward that they had that Cal originally broke into they had like a, a sub wing for criminals with with with, with, with powers that they, 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 they were monitoring so it's the population of the index is concerning but the reason for the index it makes sense it makes sense it's a it's a you know it's, um, a, a strategic thing to to actually follow up on so it it makes sense in that in in, in that way um but yeah she was put on the index and she had her own psych eval and it was it was fun seeing her and Andrew bouncing off of each other. So as soon as, like the moment she found out Andrew was May's ex husband, um, she just started on the question like you know oh, what was the wedding like? Did you go to Vegas? Did you elope? Da, da, da. Um, and you know and, and you know um, Andrew knowing how these conversations go, he did you know like like a like a quid pro quo thing like you know you tell me what you're dealing with and I'll give you some you know juicy little gossip on me, me on May and I's history. So. They eloped and not to Vegas, although May did love Vegas. I think I can't imagine the current Melinda May loving Vegas. Like Vegas seems too outgoing and you know, like um, too too peoply, too too public for her. I'd, I'd, I'd imagine her being somewhere more actiony or maybe even somewhere quieter, like a like a beachside or something. But I don't know. That was May back then, perhaps. Um, or maybe even if she just wanted to, to to get drunk and you know have fun, then I don't know. It, it, it's it's a um. But that was fun to see, uh, and she has nightmare tremors now. She was starting to have nightmare tremors. I think that was something that was more worrying for them, and you know, like more, like drove them towards more, more, more and more um, skepticism as to whether they could, whether or not they could help control her. Because if, if she was having like nightmares during her sleep that then activated her tremors, that was a whole other situation to have to deal with. Um, but yeah, so that kind of made them consider more and more like whether or not she was actually suitable to be out in the field and out and working. Um, but I did, I, I, I did, I did want to actually, you know, be willing to actually give her the chance, like, you know, see, you know, send her out in the field, so she, see if she can actually control herself. And she did, I mean, in the end she controlled herself, but to the point where she wasn't really stopping them, she was sending them inwards. So she was damaging her own body again, putting herself at risk um, to stop, get to, to to prevent other people from getting hurt and then that just knocked her out fully and she had like bruises and like capillary bruises all along her arms and stuff and yeah so 
again, no malicious intent. She is mo- she is much more willing as a shield agent as a person. She is much more willing to put herself at risk with her own gifts and her own powers if it means you know preventing other people from getting hurt, even the index criminals, even the index criminals from getting hurt. So, yeah, uh, that was that. We know that Cal is somewhat of a uh, a, a scientific experiment. He's somewhat of a science experiment. He um he gave himself a serum. He gave himself like a formula that he created that gave him that strength. So so he's not fully alien then. He's not. F- I mean, someone pointed out that you know it, like his, his strength. He he does seem to be a little strong, and he does seem to be you know a little more than human. But so he but but it, it, does he actually have any alienness in him? Because now now we know he gave himself a formula, and it required tweaking. Because I think. I think the problem with his though, with him though is that he has anger management issues that just you know enhances his strength and you know makes him lash out a lot more. But the fact that he gave himself a formula means that you know he could use his anger and his you know lash outs to his own advantage. So yeah, and even Gordon at the end, Gordon you know, Gordon rescued him from uh, from from Shield and said you know he um he he's not one of them. He's not one of them. He's not an inhuman. He's just a scientist. He gave himself his abilities, but he wasn't activated by terogenesis or whatever. So. Yeah, and then um, then Gordon said that you know he would be um, he would be he like like his fate would be decided by someone else. He was making too much noise. That was their issue. He was drawing too much attention to them and to people like them, to gifted people. And you know, and that was Gordon. That 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 was literally Cal's whole agenda. That was his whole mission, like to to make the world aware of what Shield does to gifted people. But then that would draw more attention to to the Inhumans and put them in a much much darker spotlight which was exactly what they wanted to avoid and you know it's pretty ironic given what given what Cal wanted to do oh show them how they're treating us but then in in turn put sh- 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 shine a spotlight onto you know um gifted people who also just happen to be vulnerable so yeah but then who's going to decide his fate i don't know i don't know if there's like a leader of the humans right now or the war or what's happening but gordon did, gordon did take um Cal in before he managed to do much more protesting um, but yeah, and then Bobby and Mac at the end, or Bobby and Hunter, uh, um, Mac and Hunter at the end. So he had he had Bobby, he had Mac, he had he had Hunter in prison the whole time, just changed to a a, a sink pipe and stuff, and brought him like Hawaiian pizza and a beer. Um, but yeah, so then they they requested the they requested the extraction by the end of it, and then got him to the new base of whatever. And so he he so they've been so they they're not creating. A new organization. They already there already is one, but so apparently someone else created a, a new shield in the wake of the of the, the destruction uh, destruction of the original shield. But who was that? Then they're working for the real shield, apparently. So what? Uh, so, I mean, obviously there are questions. What dignifies this as the new shield? What, what certifies this as the real shield? I mean, they have a logo. They have like a an actual shield. Like an actual triangular shield and like an eagle with two, with three stars on it. So apparently that's the real shield now, um, and it's what Hunter and it, 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 it's, it's what Bobby and Mac it's who Bobby and Mac have been working for all along. The the real shield man. So, so I mean, right now more than anything that begs the question as to who leads it, who's the, who's the director of the shield? Is it like a directorless organization? Is is, is is everyone equal and you know is everyone is that lead, lead? I mean, I don't think I don't think they could they'd go down that route. But then you know who 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 is the leader? Who who in the modern day? is the leader of this real shield and like what does that mean for the current shield like because because i think i don't know i don't know what their plan is if, if if this real shield means that the other shield doesn't need to exist so they're going to plan on taking it down or or what's going to happen or if like or if they are literally just or, or if they are literally just leaving that shield and going for this shield. like what makes this shield better than the other one because i think I think they have trust issues with this other shield. I think they 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 have issues with the fact that Colson doesn't share everything with them, all the information. He doesn't really he give like you know like 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 Max outburst earlier in this earlier in the season. He said that you know um, Colson never really tells them anything. He just gives them he just cracks out orders and expects them to follow up on it without actually giving them any clear idea of what the hell's going on. So I think maybe with this one there's like there's a less restriction on information. I mean, yeah, and again I think. Given that May, given that May pointed out him like having to watch his rank and his you know his quite his place on the shield hierarchy, I, I I guess that you know he's probably like a higher level agent in this real shield. Like he's probably like a level seven, level seven agent already, whereas compared to Golden Shield, he's probably like a level two or three or four or something. Um, but yeah, so I think I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe he maybe maybe he's trusted more by the leader here, or maybe he just feels more comfortable working here. But yeah, I think. 
Yeah, like like how long? So wait, no, how, we we know how long because they, they they said like this is the shield that was created in the wake of the original shield destruction. That this was salvaged from the from Fury's shield. So so I think is it fair to say that they started around the same time, like Coulson's shield and this shield sort of started around the same time. But then Coulson is the one who had the toolbox. We 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 know that you know they didn't get the tool. I, I don't know if they if they still have the toolbox because I mean Mac located the toolbox in Colson's office, but we never saw them taking it, so I don't know if they actually had it or not. But then Fury like the the the, the, the toolbox that Fury gave Colson was the what was what allowed Colson to reboot this shield. So what does the other shield have then? Do they have the, a toolbox of their own? Or what is it, I think? Because I think I think if the if 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 the director of this real shield is a former shield agent themselves, then that makes me question whether or not they even had a toolbox to begin with. If they made an if if they made a new shield without the toolbox, then I think that's a testament to how good they are of a leader and how good they are of like an organizer to put together this this shield without needing a toolbox to begin with. Um, whereas Colson actually had one. Um, but also the fact that maybe they self appointed themselves the, the the director of shield. So did they have you know like did they have like strong alpha individual kind of qualities? So yeah. Um, I don't know. It raised question. I think I'm kind of wondering if like, I mean, I, I I mean I do suspect we're going to get a reveal, but it, it is like I I I don't know whether it's worth speculating on who the director is because I don't know if it's going to be someone I know or someone I recognise or maybe it's, it's going to be someone you know exclusive to the TV show. Maybe someone we've never seen in the movies. I think could it be Maria Hill? Could it? I don't know. I don't know. I I, I, I was wondering. I don't know. I, I don't know if it could be Maria. Hill. I think I don't know. Would she go behind Colson's back like that and make her own shield? Would she do that? Would she? Do, I don't know. I can't see her doing that. I, I don't know. I mean, it would be an incredible plot twist. It could be an incredible plot twist. I don't know. I mean, I mean, the, the more I speculate myself about this, the, the more I, th- I, I, you know, the, the more I think I just sound, you know, stupid. But I don't know. I, I feel like that would be a great plot. A great plot if, if Maria Hill is the one who, well, she would again. No, she wouldn't do that. I think because surely she would know that Fury entrusted Coulson. Like she, she was se- she, she was second in command to, to Fury, and Fury entrusted Coulson with the birth of a new shield so, so I mean yeah so she's a good enough and loyal enough shield agent to the both of them to Colson and Fury that she would never go behind their backs to do something that they don't know about but yeah oh uh, okay I, I mean okay, I, I don't think it's gonna be Murray Hill I think that that, that that was maybe too far of a stretch but I don't know I don't know I don't, I don't know who else could be. I guess maybe it could just be something with someone we've never met as someone who's ex- exclusive to the TV show like you know Victoria Hand was exclusive to the TV show so well she's dead now she was she was murdered by Ward so yeah I don't know this this real shield has me scratching my head and scratching my brain a lot to figure out some stuff but we're all in good time all in good time um but yeah I think I've written down other stuff but nothing really seems to be like note like a tunes you know discussion worthy just stuff about the index and Colson being Stronson born nine when his dad died I, I didn't know I, I knew he was young when his dad died but I don't know exactly how old he was um Carla Faye Gideon index member yeah Levi and and I think Francis yeah the dude with the strength and stuff he gave himself steroids and shit um but yeah nothing else I've really written down I think it's a interesting episode I think you know I think what kind of bothers? I mean, not bothers me, but what what what, what kind of what worries me with starting each episode is just wondering if, if you know each episode is going to be noteworthy or discussion worthy. But some of these are like good enough to keep you you know to keep you going, but it's not exactly nothing huge happens with this. There's obviously fun reveals and plot twists, but yeah, nothing too noteworthy to go on either. So fun episode. We'll see exactly where stuff carries out. So I think I think so far Daisy. I think in terms of Daisy, I think she's having some really like you know closely like close knit development so far i think they they're kind of going the route of showing that you know she's very much afraid justifiably so of her own powers but right now i think i think it's she's definitely kind of switching in terms of situational kind of you know approach like you know if she's just being monitored and just just you know sitting in her little you know in in in, in her in, in her own room and thinking about stuff then she's focusing on actually you know, she's focusing on the training she's been taught. She's containing herself, keeping herself calm, monitoring her BPM, keeping herself level-headed as much as she can, and trying to maintain her sanity. So that stuff. But then, as soon as it comes to her mission, she's kind of, you know, especially in this episode, she was willing to prove herself. She was willing to put her put herself on the line. You know, again, not in a malicious way. She wasn't out there trying to hurt people, but you know, much rather she was actually, you know, willing to, you know, prove that she could handle herself and still be an effective shield agent. So. 
that was uh, that was fun to see. So that kind of development showing that you know she you know when it comes to the mission she's focused on the mission she wants to be able to do her job and do her job well and prove herself but then when it comes to downtime she jumps straight back into her training so she tries to keep her level head and tries to maintain everything at like a steady level so she 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 is working on herself as time goes by and yeah and like in the, in the midst of all of this is what everyone else questioning what the hell's going on and you know struggling struggling to differentiate between fear and you know like misunderstanding and whatnot it's it, it, it it's hard for her to actually keep herself same, but she's managing. She's managing. But yeah, that is pretty much all I have from this one. So again, fun episode, fun reveals. Uh, we'll see where it, where the show takes us in the next episode. But yeah, anything I missed out on or anything you guys want to share, comments are open. Feel free. Let me know what you thought. Uh, keep spoiler free, of course. Um, but yeah, that is pretty much all I have. So that was Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 2, Episode 13, titled One of Us. So thank you guys for so watching this video. If you guys enjoyed it, then salt and burn that like button. Uh, comment on what you thought of the episode and what you think is coming next in the season. Uh, the Uncar reaction will be available on Patreon, so feel free to go check it out. And yeah, that's it. So I will see you guys next time.